Um, this is the actual paint. You can see that it's actually like the gray is more of a light mid-tone. And then here is high key. This is definitely high key, but it's the anomaly. Like there's not that much white white in this painting. And um, this feels light, like it almost feels as light as that simply because of what's around it. But the main thing is that when you look at this painting, um, how do you know when a painting is finished? That's a really big question. And there, there are many criteria for me um, and, and what I try to teach with in my school, because I have an art school, and that's where I, I, I try to share all the things I've learned over 30 years, which there's a lot of stuff in there, but I have to say of all the things I've learned, you know, there's really not, you can, you can definitely boil that down into like, what's the most important thing you need to know. So when a painting is finished, number one, what I ask myself is like, where does my eye go first? And then where does it go second? Is there a logical navigation? Is this pleasing to look at? Or is it like a total confusing mess that you just stand there and you're like, I don't know what to look at. So areas of high contrast here definitely be this light is kind of going to be a potential entry point. This could be a potential entry point down here simply because uh, not only is it got a light value, but underneath it is high saturation. And then right next to it is the dark. So this may be your area of entry point. But the point is that wherever you enter this painting, for me personally, I might enter it here. And then I'm like, okay, I, cause there's a lot of great stuff here for me. Like, I love this. I love this right here, lower left hand quadrant. This probably has the most interest of everything. But then I go up to here because actually that little area here, see if I can show it to you better, um, is kind of got some interesting um, things going on. And I, there's some things that are very, very small that you can't really see very well. So then I might go to this because this is the next logical dump, jump going from here to here. And then this goes to here because that's high contrast. And then it's like these, this texture brings me down to this area here. And then I'm coming back down here again. So um, it's kind of like the circular pathway. Obviously there's like this, this um, area here and anywhere you see color um, because color is now kind of the anomaly. I've knocked out a lot of color. So that's, um, I don't know if that's helpful to you or not, but those are the things that I look for. Like, okay, so that's one thing. Navigation is a clear and the values, clarity of how the eye navigates through your painting is based on value almost always. Unless your painting is not anything to do with value, it's more about like highly saturated colors where you don't have a lot of value differences. And we've been studying this in our, in our Art and Success Pro membership group, we've had a special guest come to us and talk a lot about, you know, the three attributes of color because color can be broken down into three things, value, the color itself, and saturation or high intensity. So depending on what you want to use of that color, um, maybe, I only want to, maybe I want to use the value. Um, and in this case, I am using the value of color to help navigate through this painting because this painting um, is not really about color. It's about these neutral colors, right? The color is special, but I wouldn't say that this painting is about color. So it's good to know what it is you're trying to feature. And for me, what I'm trying to feature is my love of like certain areas of texture, this light veil, which comes from the mono printing. I do love the color red. But notice this whole painting is not red. I'm, um, I'm offering up some of my favorite colors in very small quantities. I'm being very careful about that. So now, um, any questions about finishing your painting? Like, does that help or? Let's see here. I had to post things under your um, name, Pam. I apologize for that. I can't seem to get those links to post from my phone. I don't know why. No worries. Um, yeah, I don't know why that's happening. So anyway, um, and I was just looking to see if other people have commented. Bonnie says that she... You can even cut a little sheet of paper, um, like match the size of your format and cut a little quarter uh, chunk out of it and then just keep turning it 
and turning it and turning it. So you're kind of just looking at one quadrant at a time. But for me, visually, I'll take a photo and then I'll, I'll look at the photo. Convert to black and white. That's something I haven't shown you, but many, many times throughout this process and clarify, I'm converting this thing. I'm either converting into black and white or like I, I just use my eye because the longer you paint, the longer you know that, hey, this is a light mid tone and this is a dark. And I know that my, my, my pure saturation is, is mid tone. But uh, until you become really like comfortable with uh, looking at colors and knowing what value they are, like I know that this is high key, um, the light, but I also know that the gray is a light mid-tone. And, and that only comes from experience. Like a lot of people might say, oh, that's really high key. Well, in, in rel relative to everything else, that's true, it is. But if I want to be like really... Um, what is that really? That's that's a light midtone. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, this painting is still um, it's on Arches oil paper, and a lot of people ask, how do I mount this onto panel? And the reason why I love working on Arches oil paper and also my ampersand panels, but the beauty of Arches oil paper is you could have like a hundred of these paintings, and then let's say you've got a show coming up and you got to choose which ones you want to mount. You're not going to mount them all, obviously. So what happened was I I measured. Um, Notice how I did block off the border with tape. And then I measured like, okay, I'm willing to lose an eighth inch on around the perimeter of the painting itself to get to 14 by 14. Then I ordered this little Blick panel and I um, got several of these. So when this painting is dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, obviously take the plastic off and then I'm going to use my Lineco neutral adhesive. Um, I use Lineco neutral pH adhesive, but you could also use like a, a gel, like I have this Liquitex gel. You could use this to adhere your paper to your panel. Now I'm just mounting this painting. So I will put two layers of gloss medium. I don't need it to be light colored because the paper is totally opaque. I'll then use my neutral pH adhesive made by Lineco, but again, um, you could probably use any of the, the gels. Um, Liquitex or Golden has a gel, but just keep in mind, you gotta go really fast. You gotta get it on there really fast. Make sure you get the corners and the edges uh, really well. And then you're going to take your painting, and if you can feature this camera on my desktop now, Lisa. Let me get so, it here. Yeah, notice how um, I, I can't really show you this all that well, but notice that the panel is um, not as big as the painting. I'll just kind of exaggerate, like it's not as big. So there's excess all the way around, all four sides, and that's what you want. You want to order a panel that's smaller than your painting, not bigger, because you'll have a problem. So now this painting is bigger than my panel by a quarter of an inch all, on all four edges. And you can see that because I've got white, that's where I taped it off. And as I said, before I measured this or the panel, I, I was willing to lose an eighth inch all the, on each edge because that gives me a fudge factor so that when I glue this on, now let's say that it's completely glued down and I've got these edges to deal with. And let me grab a sheet of this jelly paper and just show you, because it's not completely dry yet. I'm just gonna like hold it upside down. Okay, now when you have this completely dry, you're going to, let's say, uh, gotta go the right direction here, this edge. This is really exaggerated, but let's say that's all your excess. You're gonna take a super sharp blade, razor blade, and just cut, trim, trim that off. You're gonna go around all four sides, trim the excess off. Then you're gonna flip it over. Obviously the white, this white edge will be gone and you'll only have your painting. Now let's say that you accidentally like twisted it a little bit and well, hopefully you're not seeing your cradle panel cause that that's not good. <laughs> I'm not sure what you do, but anyways, uh, if you were to have say one area where you just have to touch it up with paint, go ahead and do that. Not a big deal. And the last thing I want to show you is how I sign my name. Cause a lot of people ask you that, like, how do you sign your name? And for those who, who don't even know about my school, I just want you guys to know that uh, 
my art has not been easy. Like it has not been an easy road for me. And one of the reasons why I, I, open, I, I uh, started my online school is because I don't want other people to suffer the way I did in terms of wasted time, wasted energy, wasted money. Um, I, I sort of feel like, you know, we artists kind of need to get to where we want to go as quickly as possible. And that was the whole reason behind focusing all of my courses um, on, rather than technique, it's on like something much more important to me, which is color and design. So notice I've got a piece of deli paper over the top because it's just a little bit, it's not even really tacky, but I'm not taking any chances. This is my pencil. It's a uh, 8046, uh, yeah, Stabilo pencil. And I buy these by the dozen because, I mean, I go through them. I go. This is my favorite pencil, so of course I buy like a dozen of them at a time, and they're not that expensive. And I've sharpened it. Now I'm putting deli paper that I, I cut a little chunk out of. You can see the little corner. So that if I rest my hand um, to steady the painting and everything else, um, I'm not going to like, you know, get paint on my hand. And I'm just going to sign it. Um, I got to, I guess, figure out which is top and bottom. <laughs> but the, and the way that for me to determine what's top or bottom is like, uh, because of gravity, um, oftentimes the weight, meaning high saturation or darks, those things tend to want to float down to the bottom. So it's not that this painting couldn't work in any direction. I think it could. Again, so as I turn this, I'm showing you kind of what I would uh, do uh, myself to make sure it's balanced. But I feel like it's pretty well balanced, but I feel like, um, like this wants to be the bottom. And this being light wants to be on top. So in this case, I'm going to turn it like this and my signature will go down here. I take deli paper and I just do this, kind of just protecting this area. And now I just sign. It's, it's quite easy. I'll show you guys. Now, I'm not getting too close to the edge because I don't know how much I'm cutting off. And I could be signing this once it's mounted, but in some ways it's easier to do it now because it's flat. It's not on a cradled panel. And Maureen just mentioned, or I'm sorry, it was Susan just mentioned that if you're framing, make sure your signature is not going to get covered up. I know I've done that before. Right. <laughs> see, I'm trying Let's to figure see out here. Do you want me to put it on you so that it's easier to see? I'm, I got to figure this out. Hang on. Which one are we? The other one? There it is. Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that. 